Okay, my friends, very difficult subject. Quantum mechanics, photons of light, atomic structure. Do not freak out. Very simple when you boil it down. All right, if you can understand what you're looking at right there, you, you're done. Because this is really what the atomic world is. Hold on, let me back out here a little bit so you can see. This is what's called electron flooding. Now, that means that the core of every atom is not made up of one giant proton or two or three or four. It's made out of 1,836 little tiny pieces like this in every proton. And the 1,836 of these are nothing more than 1,836 electron masses. All right, and you say, what's an electron mass? Well, an electron mass is this right here. All right? This is, and I couldn't put this on there because it is so reactive. It's, and that's what an electron is. It's extremely reactive. If I put it here, I couldn't get it to stay here. And the next, when you go up from this dipole two-part electron, which is highly magnetic, and has a one charge then you go up to two of these back to back see it here this is what one of them is and I made a little diagram of where it would sit next to there but if I put it there it's going to go flying it cannot stay there it's too reactive then you have the four banger which is two of these bang bang one up and one down so you have minus up and plus up plus down, minus down. So it's back to back. Same particle as far as I can determine. You know, they call them positrons and electrons, and, and that's fine because one's up and one's down. But if you turn that one upside down or turn this one upside down, they'd both be the same. What's the difference? I can't find a difference. But apparently there must be because um, they can see them at CERN, some of them going up and some of them coming down. So I'm going to have to assume that they're breaking into pieces that are positive and negative. But I can't prove that, and they can't either right at this point. No. But you go, this is the first visible particle that makes light. See, it's a little one. It makes red. Now, red, when this thing goes flying off of the, of the atom to make its light, it's just a little puppy. It's got no real impact. You cannot drive an electron off of a surface with red. I don't care how high you turn it up. You can turn it up to red smackaroony, and it's not going to push away any other electrons because it does not have the impact strength. As you come up to bigger chunks, and that's all it is, a bigger chunk and a bigger chunk, and then as you go heavier and heavier, you get into the ultraviolet and x-rays and gamma rays and the dangerous extremely serious rays all right now once you get into the green and the blue the blue even if you just barely turn it on it knocks x-rays out it, it, i mean it knocks ions out which are electrons it drives ions off of surfaces it's just a big chunk it's like throwing a, a hand grenade or not another hand grenade it's like throwing a, a, a cannonball in this is like throwing in um, maybe like a bowling ball, and this is like throwing in a ping pong ball. All right? This can't do any damage. This can knock a thing if you throw it high up in its high end. If it goes in slow, no, not a big deal. If it goes in real fast, well, then you've got a serious. And then if you throw this in, you just toss it in there, like just drop it in there, and it's just, phew, it's too heavy. It smashes everything to bits. So that's the difference now. I have captured this in light. Well, I didn't. Renz, a friend of mine, did over in France, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. But as far as electron flooding goes, this is your nucleus. Now, hydrogen has only one of these. All right, that's a proton. It's 1,836 times the size of one of these electrons. And one of these electrons is like this. Now, if I put this here... It, it, it takes right off and starts to interact because it's, it's just very powerful and strong little magnet. 
but it is what it's everything starts out here I can't get it to stay there but everything starts out with a two banger then it goes to a four a six and an eight after it hits the eight it's smashing things so hard that they're above our visible spectrum it's as simple as that now those are all photons and they box together like this and it's always a plus to a minus a plus to a minus a plus to a minus and they're all that and as they build up and build up there's three different sized chunks and I'm showing this here now I, I'm showing a positron and an and a, a electron however I don't see any difference whatsoever between a positron you see here electron and a positron it's up and down it's up and down but it's reversed same size but one has a positive spin and one has a negative spin I understand that but I don't understand it <laughs> alright now we're gonna go into Crookes radiometer now do you understand what light is the heavier particles hit they do more impact the, this one here yeah, it's, you know it can, can hurt you this one here no big deal it's a puppy alright so let's go into Crookes radiometer all right, this is a friend of mine in France, Renz, that took this picture with his thumb up against the, the sun. And uh, these cell phones are absolutely fabulous. And he got the blue, green, red, blue, green, red, blue, green, red. This is the white, which is the Higgs field in its entirety. He created a half of a Venturi with his thumb. It's just like an airplane wing, accelerating that light as it goes over his thumb. Simple as that. I, I'm not going to do the Crookes radiometer today. Uh, it's just going to be too, taking up too much time. All right, this is from the Venturi experiments. Red laser accelerated through a Venturi, creating Higgs fields. This is a new particle that's unknown. Now, these are light particles, so they're the smallest particles, apparently, they say. Now, this, I believe, is the actual photon right there that I was just talking about. This is what it is. It's one of these. Alright? Now, here's the issue. You have an, a positive and negative, a positive and negative. So they're back to back, so they end up having a neutral charge. One of them would have a positive and negative, just like a bar magnet, so this becomes highly reactive. Now, if I put this together with that, it either can go that way, or if I snap it down here, it can snap sideways. You see it? Now, if I turn these back to back, what's the difference? If this one turns around this way, I don't know. But I do know that they are, this is what we see. And that's coming right out of the accelerator. After acceleration, this is the acceleration up here. And as they come out and they start to slow down, they become visible just for two different cycles. And then they, you know, it's like a wagon wheel as it slows down the old westerns. And then it stops and then it goes back the other way. I don't know what to say. That's what we see. And that appears to be the situation. So stay tuned. We're going to get deep into this because I'm doing the, all the numbers and how much it takes of electron volts and what the angstrom units are that the you know it, it jumps away from the nucleus and what the wavelengths are related to the you know the whole thing it's, it's a complex it's very complex but it's um it does seem to be taken on 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 a pretty obvious pattern so i'm going to pursue that it's it's certainly not the way they are portraying it. absolutely not and once you you know i took a course in a uh, university of geneva about all these particles, particle physics. And uh, all they are is the little bitty ones which I showed you going up all the way up to till they get big chunks and smashing into you. That's what hurts you, is the bigger chunks. And they hit things so hard that they drive off chunks that we can't see. They're not in a visible spectrum anymore. So, that's it for today. Thanks. Mudfiles University. Thumb it up. Talk it up. Let's get some reality out there and get some discussion going. Now, I'm not saying this is all factual. I don't know. It's what I see.